Is it smart to use food coloring as a fountain pen ink? I know a certain someone who does it all the time. All right, I don't know who certain someone you're referring to. The way you're implying it makes it sound like it's somebody that I should know, but I don't know who you're talking about. Um, so I did a little bit of research, watched a couple videos, looked at Fountain Pen Network. I've heard a little bit here and there in the past about using food coloring as a fountain pen ink, as opposed, you know, I've heard of people using coffee and tea and wine and all kinds of other like food grade stuff because frankly, you can get these things in a cheaper um, quantity, you know, cheaper per milliliter than you can a bottle of fountain pen ink. So that makes sense uh, why the question would come about. Um, it seems to be like the answer is yes and no. Um, at some level, it's not that different. It's water and dye. Of course, the type of water and dye and biocides and lubricants and other things like that. You know, fountain pen ink is not a amazingly complex, at least tip, you know, some base fountain pen inks are not amazingly complex. There's some level of chemistry that's involved and it's all rather proprietary, so I don't 100% know what every ink includes. Um, but largely, you know, you're talking ink, dye, water, um, some sort of salt solution, salinity, um, you know, some sort of biocide, um, and then uh, lubricant. So those are the main components of it and what mixture and exactly what they are and how they play well together is what varies so much from ink to ink. Um, so I don't know the exact chemical composition, but I know that food coloring is not, it's not like it's putting, you know, paint into your pen. It's not like it's that different. Um, the degree of biocides, I believe, are different. So it's my understanding that food color may lack some of the sufficient biocides for regular pen use, though I've seen some videos of people that have used them regularly and have not had an issue. So I don't know if that's a universal thing or maybe just in their particular climate it didn't happen to um, get exposed. I know there's some brands like um, Urban, for example, they don't use any biocides in their ink and they seem to be okay. You got to be super sterile in order for that to happen. Um, but that ha that's, that's possible. Um, it does lack some of the same surfactants and, some, and lubrication, so it may not flow quite as well. You're not going to see as much shading and some things like feathering and um, bleeding shade and stuff like that. Um, spreading on the paper uh, are probably going to be different with, uh, with a food coloring as opposed to fountain pen ink. Um, and the degree of like permanence and light fastness is very much in question, so in terms of longevity, but you know, I will say that if it's something that you're going to be writing with and not keeping for very long or writing and keeping closed and in like a journal where there's not light exposure, that's going to minimize a lot of that. It's definitely not going to be waterproof. Um, so, you know, I've, I've, in my research, I've actually seen it talked about more for use with inkjet uh, printers. You know, people using food coloring to replace their inkjet printer ink because per milliliter inkjet printer ink is the most expensive ink in the world. Um, but that's something, and a lot of them have computer chips and stuff now to prevent you from doing that, but um, that's, that's actually where more of the conversation came up. Um, but it's something that I would say you can, you can maybe experiment with, especially um, if you have an inexpensive pen that you don't really care about as much, and um, you're like a student or somebody that just needs to write something that's maybe not super permanent. Um, but cost effectiveness is your absolute priority. I would say, what have you got to lose? Um, as an authorized retailer, speaking from pen manufacturers, I know that food coloring is not something that is like condoned and recommended for regular use in fountain pens. So I would say it's definitely a use at your own risk kind of situation. Um, and you shouldn't plan on using it in any, you know, more precious or more expensive pens in your collection. But if it's something you just kind of want to mess around with, I say, what the heck? What have you got to lose? Um, but uh, another cool thing is because you can get some of the kind of basic colors, you can mess around with some ink mixing stuff. So if you want to go like the complete opposite end of the spectrum of the ink alchemy set, you could go like to the grocery store and get some food coloring, you know, in the different almost CMYK colors. And you can mess around and make your own stuff and just have a good time. Especially if you're doing like mixed media arts and things like that. Um, it's not going to be light fast, but it could be still kind of fun for you. So um, I would say it's not something that, you know, long term you should consider like, I'm going to replace all my inks with food coloring. But it could be something fun to kind of mess around with if you're, if you're just bored and you want to do something kind of cool. Or maybe if you just want to see like, oh, what could be the right formulation for an ink color? You can try it with the food coloring first and then use it on a more expensive ink without having to experiment and possibly lose some of the more expensive ink in your experimenting.